Okay, this next example has an appearance that might lead you um, quite possibly in the wrong direction. Uh, for example, this is what I mean. Let me show you what uh, would be kind of the classic way maybe to start this problem. Uh, we saw a couple slides ago that if I have a binomial denominator and it's not made up of squares, uh, that we might try and rationalize the denominator. I might try and multiply top and bottom by 1 plus cosine x. Okay. Um, if I were to do that, you know, I could foil in the numerator and get, I'm just going to go fast through this because this is not the right way to do it anyway, so you could just be watching, really. But if I foil in the numerator, I get 1 plus 2 cosine x plus cosine squared. <clears throat> the denominator we get 1 minus cosine squared. Let's see, and the denominator can further be simplified to sine squared using a Pythagorean identity. Um, but we're not really making any progress. Like no, nowhere is this beginning to look like this. Okay, and the, these are secants. Notice that this has two terms divided by two terms. You know, now I started with two terms over two terms. Now I've got three terms divided by one term. Uh, so, so my strategy of rationalizing here is not really taking me anywhere. Okay. Um, it wasn't necessarily a, a bad thing to try, but it's just not helping. So I'm just going to X through that, and we're going to try something different. Um, typically, when I work a problem out, I'll just state this, and, and I make a mistake, or I do something that's not working like this, um, I don't like to erase everything. Okay, And there are two reasons why I don't like to erase everything. Um, one, I might find that later on, um, another problem might require work similar to this. And I might want to go back and look at it. Uh, two, I might try a few different things and what if everything else I try doesn't end up working and I want to come back and play with this idea a little bit more. And so sometimes it's better to just have it uh, than to erase it as we could always come back to it more easily. Um, but in this problem we're not going to need this so um, let's show another way. Uh, start over. The, the trick to this problem is this, and, and this is what you're going to learn to recognize sometimes. Um, the form of what I'm starting with is identical to the form over here, in that two terms on top and bottom plus, minus, same thing here, two terms separated by plus, two terms separated by minus. I just need to change the terms, uh, okay? Um, and so the, the key to doing this oftentimes is to look at where you find ones, okay? Where I see ones right here, I see cosines. Okay? So I think to myself, how can I turn cosines into ones. And the way I can do it is if I divide each of these by cosine, because cosine divided by cosine itself would be just one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take every term in this problem and I'm going to divide it by cosine. Okay, so notice I have I had one plus cosine over one minus cosine. I've divided everything by a cosine. Okay, that's okay to do as long as I do it to every single term on top and bottom of this fraction. Well, now I've got some instances of all these one over cosines. These these one over cosines that I see are the reciprocals to secant. Okay, so each of these 1 over cosines becomes secant, which is what I want them to be. 
each of these cosine divided by cosines become ones, which is what I'm going to want them to be. And so this then just becomes secant plus one over secant minus one and done. Okay. Kind of a neat little trick and, and kind of like, I don't know, mind blowing the first time you see it that it's that, it's that easy. Um, but that's it, and, and I recognize when to kind of look for this trick um, when what I have here, maybe I'm stuck, but what I have here has the appearance of what I want in the end, maybe, but the, ter the terms are just wrong, okay? All right, this last example, I've got some of these higher powers of trig functions uh, to deal with. Um, let's see how we can do this. Notice that uh, on the right-hand side, what I want has got signs, got a lot of signs in it. It's got some higher powers of sign in it, okay? Um, leading me to believe that I should keep this alone. Okay, just keep that, don't change it. Um, but I also have in my answer just a, a single cosine. Over here I've got cosine cubed. I have more cosine factors than I want in my answer. That's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna keep the sine cubed. And the cosine cubed, I'm going to rewrite it as cosine squared times cosine. So now this cosine here is this cosine. Okay, so I've got some of my answer matching up. Okay, I'm just going to save this now. I'm not going to do anything with it at this point in time. Okay, and I don't want to do anything with the sine cubed yet because I've got a lot of signs over here. So I'm going to keep the sine cubed right now. What I'm going to do is replace the cosine squared. And that cosine squared does not show up in the answer at all, so let's replace it. Cosine squared will be the same as 1 minus sine squared. Let's do that. Keeping the sine cubed, replacing cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared and I'm keeping that cosine x. Now I have sine cubed times this one minus sine squared I can distribute. So sine cubed times one, sine cubed, sine cubed times sine squared, sine to the fifth, times cosine x, and there's what we wanted.